The English portion of the ACT test is sure to have questions testing your ability to recognize proper pronoun antecedent agreement. Quickly look at the underlying word or words. If it's a pronoun, find the antecedent and determine its number, person, and gender. Then match it to the answer that is the same in number, person, and gender. The English portion of the ACT entrance exam is going to have several examples where they're underlining pronouns and you'll have to make the correct choices from the ones given. The way you're going to have to figure it out is to look at those sentences together, not as independent of each other. Here's what I mean. Take a look at this example. When a person studies tirelessly for days on end, it shows real dedication. If we stop there and that was the only sentence, it's grammatically correct. It's fine. The second sentence reads, you can expect to be prepared and achieve a decent result. Once again, by itself, grammatically correct, not a problem. But when you put them together, you're establishing in the first sentence a person. So what you have in that situation is a singular entity, a person. So when a person studies tirelessly for days on end, it shows real dedication. You can expect to be prepared and achieve a decent result. So we're going from first person over into second person using you. So given the choices of A, no change, B, he or she, C, they, or D, we, we do need to make a change. And we also have established with the letter A up there that it's singular, so we can get rid of we and we can get rid of they right away. So we're left with he or she. He or she can expect to be prepared and achieve a decent result would be correct. Let's look at another example. This is an example of a shift in number. If a student does not understand the subject they're trying to study, it can be very difficult for them. They can spend all day reviewing and still not achieve a decent result. Once again, you have two sentences that if read separately and they weren't in the same paragraph would be correct. But looking again for our clue, is it going to be singular, plural? Is it first person, second person, third person? In the first sentence, they established it singular by a student. But then later in the second sentence, you're talking about they. And they can be a group. So there must be a change. Once again, we'll get rid of the no change. Now, what change should it be? Singular or plural? We can go ahead right away and get rid of everything that's plural because it has to be singular with a. So all and we must be incorrect. Once again, we're going to go with answer C, the singular he. He can spend all day reviewing and still not achieve a decent result. Last example. When the director was discussing the main point of the meeting, it was quite interesting. You can tell they prepared for the discussion at length. In this example, you have several choices because they're going to underline more than one pronoun. So we've got to work through it. So we have the director, as being an individual, was discussing the main point of the meeting. It was quite interesting. And you see, you can tell they prepared the discussion at length. Who prepared the discussion at length? We have the director. The director is singular. So that means our answer is going to have to be singular when we get into the second part. Who's the one that prepared it? The director. So we need a singular answer there. They is incorrect because that's not singular. So let's look at some of the choices that we have. We already know no change is incorrect. So, you can tell, or we're going to switch it to, one can tell they prepared to the discussion. We, one may be correct because that's singular, but they, we established, needs to change. That was a problem there. So, for B, we're going to substitute to they and he. They can tell he prepared the discussion at length. And then we have one and he. We're established that it's singular. So we have one can tell he prepared the discussion at length, or we have they can tell he prepared the discussion at length. Given that we've established it's a singular, we don't want to change number, which is what they do in B, so our correct answer is going to be C, one and he. Recognizing pronoun antecedent errors will help you do well on the English portion of the ACT exam.